I forgot my Chewbacca cup. I could have pushed the button. I guess we're live. Okay. <laughs> Time so to where am I looking? Time to behave. That little. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> At me, That's because right. we're conversating and they're joining us for the conversation Yay. today. It's Big Word Friday. Awesome. Okay, very I'll, good. I'll bring my. Uh, I'll bring my big word. Okay, book. there you <laughs> Brain. <laughs> oh, and so we begin. Hey, everybody, Catcom here with Studio Sweat On Demand, and I am here for our premier trainer talk with the phenom, Rebecca Crudel. Crudel. Hi, guys. Rebecca, I know everybody's really excited to hear from you, um, and they're, they're going to send their questions in, and, and I have a list of questions to go over with you. I'm and, ready. Are you? I totally even t- ready. We're, I'm we're, fully caffeinated. You guys ready to go? <laughs> Aren't you always? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's start with this fun question. Okay. How, how many hours a day do you sleep? Um, it, it's cyclical. So it's probably like anywhere from four. Um, and it depends on if I'm in training mode or not, like uh, like training for a specific something. Yeah. But usually four is my, my norm. And then it will go four for like two to three days. And then I'll pass out early and get like six to eight. And then it will start again. <laughs> I have to get six to eight every night or you don't want to be around. Me when you like general. wake up normally at 3.30 and yeah. you're like, oh, I'm rested. Then you know you have, like yeah. I have had six hours. I'm like, wow. But normally like clockwork, I wake up at 3.30. Every this, day. Every day. But this morning I clicked on my snooze button because I had a little margarita because I'm not drinking after like, cause February 1st. And um, that's a different. Uh, we'll we'll probably get there. We'll get but there. But anyway, so about had that. a little margarita to like send off the January. Got it, girl. And, um, and so I incorporated my snooze button into my uh, dream. And so I, I slept until 3.50. 3.50. I was all, dude, wait. Oh, that's, that's for me. That's an alarm. That's, it's my go time. Up, up, up. You crack me up. Did you guys know that Rebecca's nickname is... Spaz. Yes, and you'll see why shortly as we continue this right. conversation. Yes. And those of you that have taken classes with Rebecca in the studio or uh, on demand, you, you already know this. Yes. Right? So I've got a, a this is an early question, Rebecca. Okay. By the way, before we go, I, I also want to say that we have Jess here with us. And Jess is, uh, she's, she's kind of like the equivalent to the guy on Jimmy Fallon. You know, she's going to be cracking jokes. Because she's yeah. awesome and yeah. funny yeah. at the same time. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so if you hear it a, th- a third voice, that's who that is. And she's our moderator for today. And uh, as you send questions in, which I hope you are, please make sure, first of all, that you tell us where you're from, because that's fun for us to know, along with your question. But Jess, will be, she'll be reading those loud for us. So cool. where was I? Um, I was going to ask you a question. Oh, OK. So one of the things that I hear all the time, Rebecca, is that people are scared to take your classes. I think it's warranted. You should ah! be. I, I totally do. But the cool thing is, is that I actually can't come through the camera, come through your screen and rip face. So you can do your absolute best and you're only going to keep getting stronger. Um, I have people that come in and they don't know me and they finish the class and they keep moving the whole time and they're beginners. So anybody can do it. Just like when I do an Ironman and I'm, I'm on the marathon and I see people, I'm like, there is no way when I look at that person with regular clothes on that I would ever think that they do an Iron Man. Yeah. So don't ever crazy. shortchange yourself. You can totally do it and it's only gonna get stronger and feel better every time you finish. Why do you think they're scared? I'm kind of intense. I don't have like, I listen to, like because on Studio Sweat On Demand has awesome trainers and awesome instructors. I agree. And a very <laughs> eclectic variety of, of um, ways to deliver a class yeah. mine is like intense from start to finish there yeah. is no in between there's no like just take it easy relax <laughs> i don't even have really a soft voice i use unless i'm trying to get air yeah that's about it but so yeah i'm very intense because an hour should be enough but sometimes it's not if you don't push yourself so that's kind of my jam okay um what would you say first of all, I will say people have said the same thing about my class and I'm always thinking we have a little bit of a different take yeah. on it, which is great, but I'm always thinking, gosh, you know, just try it. Yeah. One of the first classes I ever taught, actually, I think it might've been the first class I ever taught was at a YMCA and, oh, awesome. uh, half the class turned, uh, they got off their bikes and they left. <laughs> right. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, when people leave early, I'm always like, okay, when when they um, did I do something wrong yeah. or did they just have they had an appointment, right? right? I'm sure that that's they what had I tell myself so I don't start no, to they all, get sad. They all looked at each other like 
this girl is nuts. Right, Mm -hmm. right. And I think all of the trainers at Studio Sweat and Studio Sweat On Demand have to have a little bit of crazy in them. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. One, do you have to bring like a heightened level of energy to yes. to classes? Erin uh, so Davis that- is now chiming in saying that she's what? afraid of your classes. No, no, okay. no, 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 no she please. Just- anyways. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. Go, Erin. Good job, Erin. Um, yeah, I, I, so I agree with you 100%. I think that um, all we can do is tell people, well, first of all, be personable and relatable outside of class and they understand like Rebecca might be a beast and intense but I'm totally a goofball like I don't have a serious bone in my body seriously yeah. like well I'm, if you're on the course you do <laughs> well uh, I do have race mode and that's totally different yeah yeah well and when you're teaching I feel like that that is your right. race mode I, comes out yes but then you yes. walk away and you put on like a raccoon cap yes and say, or like a, or, or like a Rambo uh headband or Head, yeah yes, pull my pants spandex up really high like, yeah all kinds of fun so I'm hoping people get to know that side of I you hope so too. today too, so that they, they get excited. kind of very excited. They're good. saying hello all over, from all over the place. Hello oh, everywhere. Uh, hello everyone. Okay, good. So, um, and we're going to get to your questions, I promise you guys. Um, so before we get started, let's learn a little bit about Rebecca. Okay. Tell us about your family. Why don't we My start family. There? I have three amazing children. They are all athletes, but very, very different. Um, they all play ice hockey and that is the ones I can skate. I can skate with a stick. I can play hockey, but I can't play like those guys do. Um, but it's so fun to watch and my kids think I'm crazy too. Like they do. And I have an absolutely, think or no. they, yeah, they, they, <laughs> when I like, when I take them out on hikes, they're like, oh man, uh-huh. like my son, Wyatt, who's the oldest and he hikes for, um, Boy Scouts, and he won't let me come with him to lead because Aww. I'm like a little bit too much of a spaz, and I scare he used the boys. To, though, right? Like yeah, he, they used to. Oh yeah, yeah. When he was there, in Cub yeah. Scouts, yes, Boy Scouts. Now, I mean, but he's like mm-hmm. the man child. He's like six two and like. How old is he? Uh, fifteen and a half. Okay, yeah. Yeah. They start to not want you around as much. Yeah, anymore. but that's okay. I'm Chloe. I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have an amazing husband, and he plays hockey, and he coaches all three of the kids in different, um, like either inline or ice, and. I mean, we both burn the candle at both ends and are super tough. So it's awesome. Well, that's for sure. Uh, how, how old are your kids? What's so three? 15 and a half, yeah. 13 and a half, my 13 and a half, two handfuls right now. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay. And <laughs> 11 and I 11 I wish I could tell you it's going to get better. No, it always just gets different and well, mm-hmm. yeah, just different, more Challenges challenging. Just yeah. change. Yeah. Prepared. Yeah. I he's, agree. Ooh, he keeps me on my toes. So that's. You just yeah, and it. Charlotte is eleven and a half. Okay, Charlotte. Okay, aw, so that's such a sweet name, Charlotte. Um, okay, so boy, boy, girl. Yes, bodyguards, little princess, and she is micro bean. Like, did you know that that's what I have also? High five, high five. Boy, like boy, we girl. We plan it that way. Did you? I, I, this is kind of a funny question, but people always ask. You know, just because I, I was blessed personally, where I don't have stretch marks, and so I, I feel pretty lucky. Right. People always say, "Did you actually have the three kids?" Oh, I had three C-sections. Okay. Um, and because Wyatt was like compacted in there, two doctors needed to like dig him out. Yeah. And it was gnarly like Braveheart, you know. <laughs> and then after that, I just decided to go um, do the C-sections. Yeah. Um, a lot of times after you But yeah, no, one. I absolutely. And if I could have more children, I would. I've tried and my body, I think, is like that department's it's, closed. It's but, done. But, yeah. you know, whatever. How many kids would you have if you could? Oh, I would totally have a whole full line. <laughs> five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. I got this advice one time from um, a premarital counselor that I saw that said, you either, you either have two kids, four kids or more. Right. And then both of us ended up with three. Right. But you know, it, whatever's meant to be is meant right. to be. Right. It keeps right? us on our toes. Well, I have lots of, like, I have three dogs and, and four chickens. So, you know, I mean, and a lizard. Do you, you eat the eggs from your chickens? I do. They just started, like they're micro eggs because they're bantam chickens that so are little like tiny eggs. Okay. They're not really going to be. So boring. they're like a kumquat. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're like, oh, they're so cute. You they're have to give so them like, cute. I give them little donut holes when they give me <laughs> eggs. Like, good job, girls. But they don't know they're so small. Awesome. Okay. Um, I want to ask you a question just to also, the, if you feel like sharing this. What sure. is, what's one of the biggest I know people are looking to hear this. What what's one of the biggest challenges or obstacles that you've ever faced, overcome, um, successes, so, failures? Like right. So you guys, you asked me actually. Cat prepped me a little bit. Can I bit hold for that one. for you while yeah. you take oh your? Gosh, yeah. She's clearly hot. This, so yeah, hot and bothered. Mm-hmm. Hold on, <laughs> hot mess. Okay. okay. Sorry guys. <laughs> All right. Okay. There okay. You go. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're coming back. I'm coming. Here we go. Okay. All right, back at you. All right. So anyway. Um, super easy. I, once I had children, I stopped putting myself first and I've always wanted to race professionally. 
I I have what race it takes. how let's race, because we race, know but. cycling race triathlons race Ironmans sprint Olympic Ironman distance and um, a few years ago I got to the point where I was at least like I accepted the fact that it's just not in the cards right now it doesn't mean I won't still race I just don't know if I have what it takes in terms of um, because I would rather be there for my kids and be involved. Like I'm Charlotte's troop leader. I'm Owen's, um, like, uh, I'm, I'm Wyatt's team manager for his, his inline team. Like I, and I teach religious education and I do this and that tons of volunteer work and I'm with my kids and I know people do go pro and they can still do that. Um, I just don't know if I can because my husband's line of work, I just, it's, I'm a one man show a lot of the time. And, and does he so, travel a lot for work? Um, or he's just really, he works with the government is pretty much all I can say. Mm-hmm. Um, and is he getting a paycheck right now? He is. <laughs> okay. Yes. Happy, happy. Okay. Good. Um, but that has been the biggest obstacle because here I am like, you know, I have, I have a friend that was just diagnosed with cancer and I'm like, oh, here I am. Enough. And, uh, it, it's awful. And she has children, my age, my children's age. And I'm like, you know, I have, I have all of this capability and I want to like meet my potential. Yeah. But, but that's where Studio Sweat On Demand comes in because I can deliver it at least in my online classes and I can deliver it to my per- personal training clients. And it comes out that way. Like, you know, I can, I can show that's that cool. I'm, you know, it, it's not everything, but I read an article that like this, this one man, radical man, 60 years old, he started his ultra marathon career yeah, yeah. And, and at 60, at 60. So mm-hmm. I have like, I have almost 21, 21, 20 I feel years. like some of the most competitive athletes when it comes to triathlons, at least are older. Um, yeah. They're the it's rad. 50 to yes. or 45 to 55 year olds. So they have a little more time because their kids are older. I'll just be a Yoda racer. Yeah. So see, I mean, it maybe it's just, that's in the cards for me and that's totally cool. I, I don't mind. And I, I got this rad email yesterday that it's been 20 years since I won the national championship for rowing at USC and they're honoring us this, um, this May. And I was all 20 years. I feel like a youngin still like 20 years yeah. ago. What? I know. Anytime I hear something that's 20 years crazy. Ago. I'm like, I could yeah. take a, like a 20 years younger rower down. Like, yeah. let's go. Oh, <laughs> it was like, like seriously. don't you love when people tell you, you look great for your age. People don't tell me that I have crinkles and wrinkles oh. everywhere. Oh, come oh, on. It's cool. It's cool. Like I don't, I look my age. I'm gonna be 40 in February uh, 17th. I'm good with it. Like, you, you know. look good for any age. Oh well, thank regardless, you. Regardless, so uh, let's be honest. Both of you look phenomenal. Thank so. you. Woo, woo, Jimmy right Fallon. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> 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 What's that guy's name? That's I don't it. know. Uh, I'll Google it. This okay. is Jess. 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 Everyone's gonna know our Jimmy Fallon's That's name. Right. So okay, and she's also gonna be on demand pretty soon. Um, those of you that took <sighs> it's the live, be awesome. Um, she is so and much fun. And her music raw. Yeah, she's a ball of energy too. Yeah. She. Uh, some. Some of you that took the live class on New Year's Day got a little introduction to Miss Jess here. Oh, so. I'm jealous. That's awesome. Yeah, they had a lot of fun. Well, Questions. thank you for sharing that. Yes, of first course. of all. So it sounds like um, that. <laughs> What was the hardest part about that? Just, um, just to wrap that up, just to tie that up. Uh, to r- realize that I wasn't gonna go for it because I like, like when we play games, like board games or whatever games, it doesn't matter if it's tetherball or yeah. sorry, whatever. I don't quit. Yeah. Ever. Do you ever let your kids beat you? Beat you? I will never let someone beat me. High five. Okay, because I am that. That is not a character. Builder. I am that. We play too. sorry. You knock that peg off and you say sorry. You don't, oh, let's share squares. And when you say sorry, you don't really mean it. <laughs> yeah, no, like, sorry. So I have a very competitive family too. Yeah. Like anytime we get together, it's always about yeah, what bowling. You, yeah. Like anything. And we don't get in the pool to, to just hang out. Right. We're like, who's up for volleyball? Oh, right. Yeah. Smash but it. But it makes it so fun, yeah. you know? We, and we've like, we're always racing like back right. and forth and the, you know, any, anything like that. So I totally get that. But I was curious to know. No, would de- because never. Because you're a great mom. Oh, well, thank you. I and try, but like, man, I wish that they'd actually wrote a manual because dude, and I tell my kids that like, just so you know, this is my first time with a 15 and a half mm-hmm. year old yeah. and like, give me a break. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to make mistakes and you're going to make mistakes and I'm going to rip your face and <laughs> say sorry. And She said rip face three times <laughs> in this last yeah, few Yeah. Like, 
Okay. All right. Well, let's get to some of the questions that are out here. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with a question from Alicia Wayne Stadler, and she's from Stanwood, Washington. That's where I'm from, actually, is Washington, not Stanwood. But Awesome. Uh, she is wondering if it makes a difference whether you do your cardio, then weight training, or vice versa first. What is better? Um, it's a really, really good question. It honestly depends on the person. We get it because all the time. Yeah. if you do your weight training or strength training first, and then you're good to go for cardio, you feel that you're more limber, that you're warm, do your cardio. Awesome. You're only going to shred faster. If you are like, oh, I maxed out my, my strength training, but I am, I'm tired and I don't want to do my cardio, then maybe cardio first would be a good idea. It, you don't want to suffer in form with your strength training ever. Yeah. So that's why I, sometimes I will suggest in those cases, if that's something that you might be prone to mm -hmm. just, but that's why yeah. the studio sweat on demand classes are so good because one, you break it up, cardio, yeah. cardio and your sculpting it and does, you hit the spin sculpt classes. And, yeah. Yes. And you hit every muscle group you should, mm -hmm. um, and you get it all done. So, I mean, and, and if you want more of something, rewind a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's awesome. So people want a black and white answer to this question. Oh. I mean, I literally get asked this question all the okay. time was cat. What should I do first? Cardio or strength? If you had to give an answer, what would your answer be? And her answer is probably not the same as, me. but that's okay. So that's my answer or what I do, I always do strength training first. Okay. After, and I'm going to chime in here because, and I know Rebecca agrees with this, but after you do a warm up, um, so yes, af always a warm up, um, that warm up can be, um, a specific warm up where you're just doing some dynamic stretching, um, or it can be a treadmill or it can be on the bike or it can be a combination. My, my favorite, especially now that I am getting older, <laughs> not old, I'm just getting older, but I like to do both. Like I actually right. like to get on the bike for a few minutes and then I'll do a dynamic warm up on the floor. Mm -hmm. So we always encourage people to warm up. Yeah. Warm then, up. It yeah. makes, it makes all the difference <laughs> and you're so much less likely to injure yourself. So mm -hmm. when I put my client on at the very like wee hours of the morning, for five minutes on the treadmill, he or she is running or walking briskly at an incline. I am running to my car, getting my goodies out, running back, hooking them up. I'm that's your so warm up. <laughs> that's my warm up, and that's their warm up. So Love warm it. up is super important. Okay, cool. So Alicia, hopefully that helps answer your answer Excellent your question. question Alicia. Even though it's not black and white, the no, answer it's, is it's not, not unfortunately. Um, Carrie Havia, and I'm going to apologize in advance when I say people's name wrong. Can you, too much cardio make you gain weight? Um, depending on the intensity of the cardio, yes. If you do your cardio at a level of intensity that increases your appetite, then... Hmm, interesting. Yes. If you do your cardio more moderately, where you can still be within your nutritional regimen, you'll be fine. Like, for example, if I go out for a run and I'm like, okay, I'm going to run 15 miles, but I'm going to do it in, in an hour and, you know, 55, 56 minutes, you know, something crazy... Or, or two hours and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. What if I, if I make it faster, mm -hmm. then I'm going to basically get hungrier afterwards. And it's mm -hmm. going to be much more difficult for me to be, you know, uh, regimented in my nutrition. But if you do, okay, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for a two hour run. And it doesn't matter if I get, you know, seven miles in or whatever, but you're running at a nice rate. And, you know, then, then I get home and I'm not ravenous, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to bonk and who, because mm -hmm. then you end up kind of like binge eating. Yeah. Like, because you no, can't, I, you can't satisfy that. that craving. Like I need to, my body doesn't know when it's getting more and I need to like, and, and you want sometimes if you're not used to eating healthy, you want yeah. sometimes the not so healthy. Oh, totally. Options. I did that burpee mile. Um, mm -hmm. and this is, this is something that happens after events all the time mm -hmm. to reward yourself. after. Abs you do oh, some, absolutely. You do a mile burpees. You better give me a cheeseburger. There, there better go. be a cheeseburger at the two patties, line. two pieces of cheese. Let's get it on. Yeah. <laughs> and I was excited because, like, for the burpee mile, I don't know. It was like it was a it was a big burn, like it was a big calorie. Oh burn. yeah, we our heart rates drops because yes, we're obsessed with those. And uh, we looked and we were like, oh, a thousand calories. Well, guess what? A cheeseburger blows that away. Oh so yeah. So that's where. So that's a really good point that you're bringing up when it comes to. It just depends on how regimented you are and how much <laughs> willpower you have with your nutrition plan. Yeah. I mean, it it it's a big deal. And if you wear that heart rate monitor and you monitor how many calories you're burning, mm -hmm. you know, you could blow it like that. So it, 
be careful. That's one of the things I like about it is, is it, it kind of helps me keep myself in check. Even, oh yeah. You know, because it's so, it's, what's the saying? It's like minute on the lip, lips, lifetime on the hips or something. Yes, like yes, that. yes. Yeah, it's so true. It's BS. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's total BS. Um, so I like what you're saying because a lot of people think that, um, cardio kills gains, you know, there's yeah. that now that's with muscle and stuff like that. We went to uh, this show one time and um, it was a show that catered a little bit more to bodybuilders and mm-hmm. we were there like talking about spinning, you know, right. and we had a couple of dudes and I'm going to call them dudes like walk by and they were like, we were like, Hey, do you want to try this? And they're like, no, no. man, cardio kills gains. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but it will keep your heart ticking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it's not so much about, you know, I think some people too think sometimes that, um, uh, that there's this balance between building muscle and, you know, strength training and cardio and I don't know. So, um, is there enough weights in a spin sculpt class on studio sweat on demand to build muscle or is it more cardio based? I think that if you lift appropriately and you listen to the cues, especially in my class, I'll tell you what you should be feeling. And if you're not feeling it, you get different (laughs) weights. I'll tell you. You know, like, okay, I'm going now to alternating because I have to. Right. And if you don't really have to, then get heavier weights. Mm -hmm. The amount of reps that, at least in in my class that I do, you can lift heavy. And if you continue to lift, you're you're going to shred. You're not going to bulk. I think that there's plenty. Unless they're taking testosterone. Um, That would be gross. No, no, (laughs) no, not an option. No. Somebody asked me that the other day. Like... They're like, are you juicing? I was like, are you juicing? What, like with a juicer? (laughs) Like, what? You know, but no, I have like, I have veins popping out, but I've never done any of that with (laughs) It's probably a question Uh, that's going to come in. I've seen you work out. There's no way. (laughs) So so if any of you were wondering, there's that question. There's no juicing unless it's like with a juicer with vegetables and fruit and stuff. (laughs) I believe you. Okay. Um, so the answer is yes. There's, I think that there's enough. That's in the how classes. I built almost all of my muscles, ladies and gentlemen, is those spins and sculpt classes, just so you yeah. know, those combo, the, the fusion classes. Seriously. Yeah. And, um, what Rebecca is saying is, is completely true. If you pick up a five, uh, set of five pound weights to do bicep curls, you are not going to be making a change to your body. If you pick up, um, and, and I'll say this in a lot of my classes, you'll say, Oh, how heavy a weights? And I'll say, I'll, I'll kind of give a specific, what do you think you would bicep curl 12 of, but the last couple would be very hard. That's what size weights. If I right. say heavy weights, that's what I want you to grab. Right. So, um, at home, it's great if you can have a, a selection of weights to totally. choose from. So, because I, you know, and there's different exercises that are going to require lighter weights as well. Like if you're doing like a lat raise, you know, right straight up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those of you that are taking the classes at home, you have to know, listen to our cues, like Rebecca was saying, and know that we are going to help guide you with what weight selection is appropriate for the specific move. But absolutely. That's a great yes, answer. Absolutely. Um, Jean Perry, <clears throat> don't know where Jean is from. Can you talk about faster speeds on the bike, 90 plus RPMs in relation to the amount of resistance? I really struggle with speed and prefer a heavier ride, but no speed is also beneficial. How do you get that fast leg speed? Okay. If you're not Bethany, <laughs> um, <to> speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome that you like to put the pedal to the metal and push hard, pedal hard. It's awesome. But your quads will go into overload and they'll need to flush with some, some faster Flat speeds. simulations. Right. Yeah. So you bring it down. You don't ever want to feel like your flywheel or your cadence is getting ahead of you, that you're just spinning like a little gerbil on a wheel. Like there's slack in you, the pedal. You strip. have to have something there you're pushing against. So after we do our, um, our rollout, the first song, and we build up enough resistance to come out of the saddle, a lot of the times I'll say, okay, so from now on, our flat road should be enough where you could come out to third. Not feel like you're on a hill, but you could come out and not feel like you're going to fall forward. You you want to feel like you have that road. It's It might not be the best verbal cue, but it's something so that you're thinking, I have to have something on. It's not like I brought it down to the tiniest chain here, and I'm like, wicked, wicked witch of the West. You know, yeah. not like yeah. that. So it's important. Don't, don't worry if you don't hit the 90 yeah. RPMs, just a quicker cadence, a lighter resistance, but still having a road beneath you grip. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, you'll know the difference. Mm-hmm. If you're with, if your whips, if your hips are wiggling around in that saddle, the gear is probably a little yeah, light. If you're you. bouncing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you should feel 
you know, the catch. And another thing is if it takes more than a couple of res- revolutions to slow down, you, you, oh, didn't, yeah. you didn't have gear on. Right. So. Right. Abs- that's, that's perfect. Yeah. That is absolutely the and perfect. And we, um, one of the things that we try to do is we do try to give different types of cues. So, you know, Rebecca might say what, what you just said about coming up and, uh, into third. And, um, I might say something like I just said, I know hummingbird legs like, right. but if you have to pick between resistance and speed, let's just say they want to ride on tempo or something like okay. that. Okay. If, if someone had to pick between resistance and speed, what would you pick? What would you say? What's more important that you have high speeds because that's what the drill calls for or resistance on your bike? I would say it's more important to have resistance. Yeah. Unfortunately, because you can always err on the side of if you have resistance and you can get the high speeds rad, Mm -hmm. but if you don't have the resistance and you have the high speeds, you're kind of just going through the motions. I agree with you. So same page. Yeah. So, um, so so Jean, Jean, that's a really good question. Yeah, it really is. And, and I think that a lot of people are seeing these commercials and on the commercials, they want to simulate or they want to kind of show this high intensity and high intensity when, um, especially with someone who doesn't know what they're doing, right. um, means high speed, right? Right. You always see them and they're just running as fast as they can and as hard as they can. But you know, you might see us like, choom, 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 right. and we're working like 10 times harder than right. them. Right. That's why, you know, when, when I'm in class and I'm, I'm cueing people, like you don't, you always want to assume that the person that you're, you know, writing with, or, you know, if you're at home taking the on-demand class, you assume I have more on than you do. Yeah. So it pushes you to try to one, catch me with your leg speed, but also to challenge your resistance. I Seven. like it. Challenge the resistance. Um, this isn't a question on here, but it's a question that I want to answer. Okay. Um, and, and that is, um, too much resistance. Is there such thing as too much resistance? Yeah. Your knees will tell you, your hips will tell you, your body will tell you, you know, how would they know? Um, in your, things, like what was, what, what would you cue as like, if you, ha- if you're experiencing this, you might have too much resistance. On unfortunately, it. um, I don't think that you would necessarily know until after the class, because in the heat of the moment, you're like, Oh, I can put more on. Obviously if the flywheel stops, if you have, if you cannot push <laughs> anymore, that's clearly, too much. you know, um, there are some drills where it's a loading drill. You'll load it up. You'll, you'll push as hard as you can. And then when I say tempo, if your legs stop, they stop and then you get it back going. That's it. That's w- one example of a drill. Um, you don't ever want to feel that you're doing your knees a disservice, especially on the bike. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, <clears throat> if you can't, one of the things I like to tell people is if you don't have a smooth, like almost clock, like pedal stroke, right. If you start hinging at the top, you're like, Oh my God. yeah. And that, it becomes jerky. Right. Almost. That, that's perfect. Then yeah. you have too much. Resistance then you have too much. On. Yeah. And, um, for anyone who has any knee troubles, I, I never recommend RPMs lower than 65 ish in, in that range. So it, it, if you're taking a class and, um, you know, let's say that the tempo is 58 and you have bad knees, please just go ahead of the tempo a little bit. Keep your knees really safe. You don't ever want to feel that mashing, grinding, yeah. happy body happy keeps body. working. Okay. Nicole Jansen or Hansen or E Hansen. Not sure, because <laughs> that could be an I. I don't know. Right. Um, hi. She said hi. If anyone is trying to build muscle but still need to do cardio to burn body fat, will cardio hinder muscle gains? Oh, we already talked about this. So um, I think we answered that yeah, question already. Um, so hopefully, it, if you're listening out there and we didn't answer your question, please just send a follow-up question. And we already talked about... Oh, okay. This is... How many... So um, again, to reiterate, cardio will not hinder your sculpting work. It, it won't, you're good. Yep. And you know, of course, like it's always this question, what first cardio or strength training, our spin sculpt classes, we bounce back and forth. Yeah. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, would you recommend cardio before or after weight training and how many days? So we, Nicole, whatever, whatever your body likes better do first, make sure you do both. Okay. So yeah. And, 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 you know, worst case scenario, try both, see what, what, what works best. Mix it up. Yeah, muscle confusion. Becky Walker. I don't know where she's from, but she says, I have a mild curve in my lower back, no matter how perfect my form looks in the mirror and how much I love what deadlifts do. I can do about eight reps before my lower back starts to get achy. What are your suggestions, Rebecca, that I do as an alternative to work those same muscle groups? Thank you. All right, so she does them with weights, Mm -hmm. eight reps. Mm -hmm. I would build up your strength by not doing reps with weights first. 
try to just reach up, reach down, reach up, and then go ahead and change your elevation on your feet, both toes up and then heels up. Like a sissy squat where you pop your heels onto a dumbbell? So is that what you mean? Or? Right. So like, you know, you, you prop them up and you reach in. And so you're still doing the deadlift type motion, but you're not doing them with weights and then use your weights and then go back. There's so many different exercises that you can do for your back that you don't need to do the deadlift. Good morning, um, sunshine's a good one without weights too. Absolutely. So that's where um, I'd get up and demo it now, but then I'd be off camera. But it's basically you just take your feet just a tiny bit wider, and you bring your arms up to shoulder height, and you kind of simulate a deadlift where you drop the chest, keep the legs fairly straight with the soft bend in the knee, and then come back up. That's a, that's one I do sometimes. Mm-hmm. What what are other? You said there's a lot of different other uh, different exercises that she could do to strengthen that mid and lower back. What are some um, of the ones that you? My favorite, I I love a, a assisted pull-ups. I love lat pulls. I love any band work. Like your resistance work is excellent because you can do those high reps. It depends on what you're doing. Are you just trying to bi- build muscle or are you trying to shred it? Like you want to see it in a swimsuit or whatever, you know, high reps, repetition equals definition. It's pretty yeah. much like ingrained in the brain. It's true. Yeah. And then you can do things like, um, swimmers. Those are some people don't like the arm extension, but you can also just do like the Superman with a bent right, arm, right. things like that. One of my favorites that AJ makes me do um, is I have to lay on a stability ball, my right. belly on a stability mm-hmm. ball, and then I have to do the just gentle back That's extensions. That's fantastic. You like Absolutely. that one? And yeah. a BOSU is even, I mean, if, you're, if you don't have the, the best bounce, try that first. Dude, that's totally me. You can just like click it or something. <laughs> Sorry, jingle jangle. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Live streaming. You love it. Okay. Um, Alice Rogers, um, who also has another name, Mac Dierarmid. How on earth? Yeah, I'm... Okay, we're not going to... Alice Rogers with another name associated with it. Could Rebecca describe what she eats? Oh, everybody wants to know Oh, gotcha. Okay. On a typical day, especially before and after her workouts, and then... um, if you use any specific protein supplements. Okay, so here's, so here's, about inter- here's interesting. So Anna, um, they want to know, do you eat carbs? That's like the number. A lot um, of if I work out so for six hours, please, you're you damn right I eat carbs. carbs. Yes. Damn right. Please. I will not be able to function. <laughs> um, you know, I've, it, it's interesting. If I can be regimented in my nutrition plan, meaning like, you know, Carbs can be veggies and fruit. I can eat as much veggies and fruit as I want. And when I Miriam say Miriam says no one has ever gotten fat from it, eating and, too and much fruit. <laughs> she is one hundred and ten percent right. Eat away. You will not gain weight, I promise. You'll be also having a very high fiber count and good to go. Enjoy the bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um but uh basically it it all depends. My nutrition is is warranted on how much I've earned, what I've worked for. Um, and what my goals are. If I'm in a pre-race prep, I'm not going to eat garbage. I don't really eat garbage anyway, but like, do I? It, um, Sour Patch Kids are garbage. I, I haven't those. had candy in a long time. Really? Like, in a long you time. You used to almost I mean, I do eat it. Well, like, for example, yesterday or the day before, somebody brought me an apple fritter. It was a gift, you know? And so she I said like, it was a gift. I was like, okay, I will run and then I will eat my apple fritter. So I ran six miles and I ate my apple fritter and it was the best ever. Even Steven. <laughs> yeah, 600, 600, you know? It was, yeah. it was giant, like the size of my head. Um, so what kind of things are in your diet? Okay, so for example, this morning I uh, did strength training in combination with cardio um, for two hours straight, came home. Um, I had coffee before, just coffee. Uh, and water, like coffee with like my little goodies in it, but it's coffee. And, um, and then I came home and I made myself two eggs, two, two eggs and, uh, sauteed mushrooms. And that was my breakfast. And that was really yummy. And it was filling and I had water. And then I went to another hour of, so you uh, didn't have carbs then? No, not really. No, but But not, not by design, not, not right. But I, but normally for my first back out the door. <laughs> right. And it, I, I can't, I choose not to function like to work out feeling full. So my big thing is, is I don't eat ever like between when I wake up and 2 PM, I don't eat enough to ever feel like, Oh, I couldn't go run or, Oh, I couldn't do this, you know, sit there and like eat a bowl of pasta or something like that. Yeah. You know? Um, now I enjoy dinner with my family. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, for example, if they're having tacos, I have taco salad. Mm-hmm with lots of lettuce and vegetables and black beans and corn and a little bit of meat. I don't actually, 
What? Do you eat grains? I haven't heard you. Oh, yes. I love, um, I love rice. <sighs> Is that your thing? Is that your favorite grain? Um, quinoa. <clears throat> quinoa. I love, I love every, I love quinoa? food. Quinoa? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, normally I try to stay away from it unless I'm like, having a big something the next day mm-hmm. because you can you can tell it will fill me up like that if I'm not used to having it sure um that's one thing um I actually just was talking to a couple people about because um one of the things that my daughter team does is they do a car- carb loading night right well we were in charge last night of hosting that mm-hmm. and I'm sure you can imagine how I feel about that right I'm, so we had chicken and we like put this big plate of chicken out next to the right. lasagna that we yes. made and it went like and so you just have to offer things like that right oh absolutely so, but um it, it, you know for a long time there 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 was this whole theory on carb loading right. before races and stuff like that and then people were getting like they were overdoing it right and you and that's what usually happens because yeah. loading indicates like obsessive amounts and mm-hmm. that's not necessary um, you same, really just don't want it. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead. no, no. You're, you're right. You don't need to go excessive with yeah. anything except for the fruits and veg and you just yeah. eat them in, when you're hungry, mm-hmm. you know, and I eat regularly, like every two hours. Once I'm done with my anywhere from four to six hours of working out training, then I, I, I'm pretty much constantly eating, so is that grazing. A, about how many hours? I know I'm jumping subjects here, but it's okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to back Squirrel. up because I don't, yeah. Oh, that's so you and me. We're good. Um, so the, the point is when it comes to training and race day and stuff like that, I, and I know Rebecca would agree with me. If you change your diet, ex- you make any extreme changes, you're going to be on the side of the course, like Ooh. not enjoying yourself. Let's just, no. let's just put it that way. Yeah. So don't make big changes. Like, and God. your body will perform better. If you, if you eat clean and healthy and not like extreme, you don't have like, there's a happy medium, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, but you train and your body will respond and it will start training better and more efficiently. And then you, then you won't even crave the other stuff that you did before. Yeah, It takes about a month though. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, like a month without candy, but then you don't crave it and you're good. Yeah. 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 And then if you do put something in your mouth, rinse it out with water. Like, that's what I have to do. like if I have a bite of chocolate, I'm like, oh, that was so good. And I allow myself, I personally allow oh, yeah. myself. I, I, I do don't too. De- I don't deprive myself of chocolate. No, I, um, I earned it. Like, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, you, otherwise, what's the point? But I will like rinse my mouth out before I like, mm, oh, you're just, I just savor it. Like, mm. Just to uh, keep you two squirrels on okay. track. Okay. Okay. I know that we do have a lot of questions. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, ready. um, time is okay. okay. Let's, no, uh, no. let's make sure I've covered all of these. How many days a week, uh, from Andrea Ford in Fort Lauderdale. She just wants to kind of know what your schedule is like. Um, with how many days, a, or how many days a week do you work out? How many hours? I work and I out need every you day. No, this is not. I'm typical. not normal. I'm not normal. <laughs> I'm an alien from another planet. We're, we're clear. So I work out every day. Um, my lower intensity days when I'm not training for something specifically for myself are my weekends. And it's about three hours. Um, Monday through Friday, it's anywhere from four to six. Um, and that's working related. And then I have my own goodies. Um, and that's in the wee hours, hence the no sleep or lack of, you know, but I take vitamins and stuff. Um, but part of it, it kind of runs in your family. That's the one thing that I wanted to. Spazzing, spasmolia, lots of energy. I think it takes a special breed. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Totally. Um, to do what you do and to actually desire to do what you do. Yeah. No, that's just it. I really enjoy what I do. It's not like it's a daily grind. Like I have no desire personally to work out four to six hours a day. No. And, I and, work out the same amount as most of you do. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm aberrant and you guys are normal. So, yeah. I mean, there's that happy medium yeah. and yeah, I will say this you're though. You're special. You're yeah. like stupid. <laughs> yeah. But your, your dad, your sisters, your. Oh yeah. My dad's rocking. Like mm-hmm. amazing. My mom is amazing. Um, my whole family. Awesome. They're hardcore. Like yeah. one, one day I, know, I remember there was a story that Brian told me that you had just finished like a killer workout and it was her rest day <laughs> and she had just like, Totally wiped the floor with everybody. Um, and then he's like, what are you doing today, Rebecca? And you're like, oh, just not much, really. Um, I think my dad and I are going to go for a century ride. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, right. he's, just resting. He's, he's just, hardcore. Like, yeah. So uh, cool. he and I are both doing a, the Santa Rosa Ironman in May. So that should be fun. Like, that should be really fun. Quote, unquote, fun. Your type of fun. Yeah. Okay. Um... Sylvia in France asks um, about your nutrition and your sleep. We've already covered that. 
and she says you're amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Sylvia. And now, Jess, let's go to you. All right, guys, you have lots of really good questions, some of which have been Go ahead answered. and hold that mic closer to your mouth. Sorry, some of them have been answered already with what you guys have been chatting about. So I'm going to try and skip through some of them, and hopefully the people that are listening, that are commenting, are noticing that they did get it answered. One of the first ones is from Lori Jolin, and... <laughs> She wanted to know what kind of supplements that you're putting in your margaritas. <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> she was at the uh, very beginning. Like the Don, the Don, Don Julio, just like the really good stuff. Uh, no headaches in the morning. Funny. Okay, but on the real, first one was Scott from Wyoming. Okay. He wants to know he's about to start training for a hundred mile mountain bike. Awesome. Scott. And so he wants to know athletically yes. what you suggest talk about and nutritionally. Between, talk about the difference between mountain biking right. and, and road cycling because mile oh. for mile is not even close. Not it, nine day. Night and, and day. And the rides are very different. Um, always uh, have on board more nutrition than you think you need. Um, because mean, You mean take it with you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because you don't want to get stuck out there and not have enough, you know, depending on how hard you're riding. Um, and my biggest advice to you with a 100-mile mountain bike ride, that's the real deal. And your body in your training can handle more than you think. If you miss a day, don't try to make it up. Don't do two workouts in one day. It's not necessary and your body will not benefit from it. So hopefully that answers Perfect. that. Next we have Miss Helen in Nottingham in the UK. <gasps> we have a lot of- Hello. Hello. <laughs> they probably don't think we're funny when we do that. <laughs> she wants to know if you have any advice um, for training if you're feeling like a cold or sick, respiratory, something, you know, some people want to skip a workout. Honestly, it's very de person de per dependent on. You can do it. It's depending on the person. I have never not shown up for a workout because I'm sick, ever. What if you were vomiting? Yep. That's why I get up at three thirty in the morning because if I am, I out. fix it <laughs> and then I go. <laughs> so my answer is: if you can push through and sweat it out, rock it and do it. If you feel that you're going to have to wear a mask and go to a class and like you're contagious, yeah, don't share the love. Maybe don't do that. Um, but I have no problem whatsoever telling you that to work through it. If if it makes you worse, then your body's saying, "Heck to the no!" and and just rest. at least you tried. Yeah, yeah, you tried. Um, Some Jet, people can't, but can't. So one of the things that you guys will learn about Jess is that she's also a, a registered nurse. And so Jess, what's, that I am. what's your, what's your take on that? What, what are the benefits to working out when you're sick and what are the drawbacks? So, um, popular belief is that your immune system is weakened when you've worked out. That is not the case. It is actually at its peak and it's best after you're a very workout. very much alive. Yeah. So, uh, get those circulation, red blood cells, white blood cells. They, they like that. However, if you are, you know, coughing a lung up and respiratory, yeah, a you probably want to work out at home, um, and maybe not bring it into your friend's Please. studio. Please, yeah, and don't bring your kids in but to the studio when they're sick. Thank really, you. truly, it does yes. make you feel better. Awesome. In the yes. See, well, that's if you a, think that's about it too, like when you have answer. like uh, when you have congestion, especially if it's just a head cold yeah. at lunge, she has totally bad knees. Fine, right? So, what is your suggestion for other exercises if you can't lunge? Can she squat? Jan Coons, can you answer? Jan, if you, you can, can squat, can you, squat? you can do anything that you need to do. Also, that's why Studio Sweat On Demand offers various different classes. There are yeah, classes catered more to the more master awesome, you know, more, you know, sometimes challenged in joint areas and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I don't like to say senior. I say Matt. active older adult, active older adult. Yeah, I'm Kathy an active just, older adult. Kathy just released one. That's really good. But AJ has a workout, um, called knee friendly, uh, yeah, a knee I mean, friendly sculpt, but we actually have a vlog too, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, you can look up, uh, Jan, if you just go to trainer to videos and you look for, you just type in the word knee and then the, you'll have the visual, like, you yeah. know, we can't demo things right now, right. Jan, but, um, Honestly, if you don't see what you need on Studio Sweat on Demand, uh, Kat ask will get us. it for you. Yeah, that's She's true. She's really good at that. And so, I mean, just Thank you. ask and you'll get it. But you can do things like straight leg lunges. You can Absolutely. do um, sissy squats are great where you put your feet on heels or, or feet on um, your heels, heels on, on dumbbells. Mm -hmm. Jeez, I just had a seizure there. <laughs> um, you can do clams. You can do like there's 
uh, one you of my do bands where you're bands. I was yes, just saying, do bands, bands. You know, just get like a set of bands. They're colored, rainbow assorted, mm-hmm. awesome. Build your way up, mm-hmm. build your reps, and then start to build your range. You yeah. know, lots and lots of things. And I never tell people to shy away from taking like a sculpt class or a spin sculpt class because you can't do lunges. Because if we're doing a lunge, first of all, that lunge is probably only five to ten percent of that whole workout. So you, why would you miss ninety five percent of the workout because you can't do a lunge? Right. You know, so you can always modify it, right? And do anything you, what you want. Deadlifts. Yes. Straight leg deadlift. There you go. Boom. Boom. That's a good one. Um, right. There's always things that you can do. Okay. So you have quite a few questions that are asking how you feel about strength training and exercises versus plastic surgery. You have quite a few on here. They're asking tummy tuck or exercises or after a pregnancy, uh, postpartum um, exercises and such. So Okay. So... I will say that I have seen both and I I think that you can do what you want with exercise but more than likely you have to work 3 times harder than right. you think you do and it you just have to be committed if after you try like I don't mean like, hey, I gave it a go, like legitimately. A month. I worked my tail off for a month. No, we're talking and like I still year have year. <laughs> how, however long it took you to put the weight on, it's you give yourself at least that amount of time to take it off. Back. So if you've been putting on weight for three years, I'm just saying you have to make a commitment, like yeah. a lifestyle change. Otherwise, you're you're screaming that you want the quick fix. Right. And I'm not anyone to tell you how to spend your money. So sure. um but I, I am a firm believer that it, everything is possible with with your your own willpower. Nutrition and, and exercise. Absolutely. absolutely. With the exception of I will say uh, extra skin. I was just um, oh say yes, extra when you've lost it all, then that's that, that's so a different. Yeah, thing. even oh, yeah. that though, I will tell people give it give it like almost up to a year before you go kind under of, the mm-hmm. knife because your skin elasticity you, is pretty impressive. So yeah, mm-hmm. give it a chance. To, that's what happened. My yeah. my third child, I ripped myself right in half with my third kid. I had the um, rectus abdominal split. Yeah. And they were like, oh, maybe you should go under the knife. I'm like, maybe you should give me a year to try and pull it together myself. Right. And then I did. My skin regained its elasticity. But I've also seen people that have lost a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did give it time and good for you. Um, and uh, they, they did need to have that excess right. skin removed. Again, yeah. you know, and there, there's a happy medium. Yeah. You know, if... I would say this. If you're going to go the plastic surgery route, do your best to take as much off before you do it and yeah. that way you can reap the rewards i mean it's a pretty a traumatic thing to do to your body it is yeah and then the thing is when you do get a, a, a tummy tuck for example mm-hmm. um i've seen it enough times to know that like that fat if you start to gain weight again um it's just gonna go somewhere else it's just like stopping eating carbs and then starting again it's just gonna pop yeah. up and go somewhere it, yeah so, yeah so that's a good question though. yeah Okay, so we have quite a few more. However, I know we don't have time for that because Miss Rebecca does have to go mm-hmm. get her train on. Mm-hmm. Um, but the last two that I feel like have not been touched on is one of our from our very own Liz Smart, who used to come into our studio all the time, and then she moved up to She's Northern got California. She's a little crazy in her too. Nice, yeah. and that's a compliment. She, that girl can work out. Um, but her question was, what's your favorite uh, fluid replenishment, especially if you're working out for two hours or more? But just what's your fluid replenishment? How do you feel about le- electrolytes and replenishing that? Uh, do you do that? Electrolytes are awesome. Uh, or do you, what do you drink if you do? I'm water and I use, oh gosh, it's been so long. What is it called? What is it called? It's it's basically just, it goes straight. It's completely tasteless. Think about that for a second. One of the things, so seriously, just think about it. Um, one of the things when it comes to energy that- Carbo I, Pro. That's what it is. <laughs> I knew I just had to start talking. <laughs> Carbo Pro. That's my go-to. It's okay. old school. Um, you, I mix it in. How I do you spell it, that? Just Carbo, C-A-R-B-O, Pro. Okay. It's a little bit spendy, but it's- Better supplements sure are spendier on- sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You, it's right. put, you're putting sure you it in your body. But Amazon. but hey, I don't I don't train with that. Yeah. Like I race with that. Okay. So if you're training and you're like, dude, I can't function at work, then maybe incorporate little bits because that's like the nitrous. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. <laughs> that's how I get my energy for workouts is actually by making sure I'm hydrated. Mm-hmm. Like someone, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, 
how do you have enough energy to do what you do? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I am hydrated. You take like, care of your body. Absolutely. Yeah. You take care of your body. It yeah. takes care of you. Absolutely. But absolutely. hydration is, is not something that's talked about enough, I don't think. So I drink at least, uh, so this is my morning cup. And I drink uh, two of those before I go into any workout. And this is 16 ounces. So. Yeah, I have that. You know those jug? jug of, you have no, that big gulp looking of, one. Of, <laughs> you know, you're just like uh, crystal geyser things that are huge. Mm. Yeah, that a day. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Miss Rebecca. The last question is um, from Laura Ramirez. Um, she's in Austin, Hi, Te- Austin, Texas. She wants to know if you think there's benefits to early morning fasted cardio. Ooh, I do. Okay. I totally that's do. That's what you do. I that's think that's what, that's what I do. Like hours, yeah. you know, and I will say this, don't, don't shy away if it's not your jam f- for the first week or two. Like it's not something that comes normally. You're training yourself. Meredith Honer does that too. Yeah. I do not. <laughs> I, I prefer it, to it works. It works lean great. and mean. Just man. you have You're to be careful because sometimes people start to feel like lightheaded yes. if they if do If you the feel lightheaded, yeah. you obviously make adjustments, you right. know, or you just take down the intensity. I think part of it too is like what do you eat and drink the day before? Day before. You gotta make sure right. hydrate it, hydrate, right. hydrate. Like um, if you if you stop if you cut your nutrition yeah. early like five PM, you might be in a bad but, way but, if you right. exactly. that's a long time. Yeah. Right. I I just have um uh probably about fifteen to twenty carbs before I go in for those five thirty AMs now, which I don't mean to make it sound like I do that often once a week and even that's hard for me but um like I'll have like a three quarters of a banana oh there you go something like that but it's it whether or not like AJ can literally eat not that she would but she could eat like a full-size burrito and then work out within three minutes yeah I I, would so no way I need hour and a half to two hours hours for me I could I don't (laughs) I could totally do that oh yeah it's just um, all right All right. So any other questions that we're going to try and get in? So I think um, we have so many and people have really chimed in really well and shout outs and everything. Um, People also want to see you try and do a rowing on the studio sweat on demand. Oh, you want to, you want to erg workout? Yeah. Four years of it. I will give you an erg workout. (laughs) Rowing champion with us. Anyway, I know you uh, are short on your time anyway. So I know. Thank you guys for watching. Hit those rest of those questions. I hope I answered them as best. Oh, you rocked it girl. Um, so if you guys did like this, uh, trainer talk, uh, we will consider, Consider adding more if uh, you guys let us know who you, who you'd like to hear from next as our next trainer. If uh, if it is me that you want to hear from, I, you will be interviewing me. No, we actually have um, Kathy is our newest trainer, and she used to be a news anchor. <gasps> yeah, awesome. so I'd be like, you interview me, you'll make me look really good. So, anyways, oh yeah, she knows all those leading in questions. Totally and like perfect. Yeah, yeah. So tell us who you'd like to hear from next as our trainer talk, and if we hear from enough of you, then we'll put more of these out there. Awesome. So. And then we are potentially going to have this available um, if you want to, if you have a lot of spare time and you want to watch watch this again, again, um, we'll probably have it under our trainer tip videos uh, um, through the app or uh, on Studio Sweat On Demand. But Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you guys for joining us. You guys rocked it. All right. We're going to sign off so Rebecca can go train. Uh, Thanks for joining us today, you guys. Thank you. Later, Gators. Gators.